So, um, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Maxim Bakhan, and I'm going to present a uh, talk about radio radiative warming and its impact uh, on the prediction of outside aesthetics. And I have to say that, despite uh, what our respected chair said in the beginning, that's not about neural networks. Neural networks are everywhere except our table. And uh, I would even say that it's not about niche bells because we don't analyze the uh, images. Uh, we don't do anything with that. Our paper is more about people uh, because I myself go through the human computer interaction. And also, it's about data quality because our team does not have much data. So, to get human computer interaction data, generally, you need a human to interact with the computer. And it takes time, and it's not always uh, is impossible to increase the data set. Uh, this is the work which was done together with our master student, Daniel Master, already graduated, so he didn't come. So I will be the presenter. So machine learning, as we all know. Uh, algorithms and especially models that can perform some intelligent tasks uh, without uh, instructions, but based on training data. And usually they need lots of training data, especially the neural networks are very hungry. And deep learning operates on millions of data records. So I like this picture very much. I like what some common people think that people are there as a result. It's about like some fancy tools, right? But no, in reality, 80% of uh, the models uh, engineering uh, is about where they get the data, how they structure the data, how they clean the data, etc. And then maybe you get to cover like 10% of the time. And uh, in HCI, yes, uh, as I said, uh, somehow a special field maybe can be compared to medical data. Because also uh, scarce and uh, problematic. So there's a lot of feature based models still working. And um, user behavior model uh, is a, I wouldn't say a standard, but something that's uh, being actively researched uh, in the field. So, user behavior model is where you have input data that specifies something about the type of people. For example, age, gender, appearance, and something about the user interface UI, which you are trying to somehow estimate, uh, for example, without the real user. And then with some transformation in the model, as the output, you get prediction uh, of some interaction quality related parameters, for example, static compression. Uh, why is the static compression important? Because we all like nice, good looking. Things and interfaces are no exception. Uh, products, websites, mobile apps that have uh, nice interfaces that can uh, cause a good uh, state experience in users, they are usually more successful. So there is a lot of work that is trying to predict uh, and to find some factors that uh, enhance uh, status in user interfaces. So we are focused in this study on the specification of the UI. Which can be done uh, as a tool. We can just send, for example, HTML and CSS codes to, to the model. But it's not very good for aesthetical purposes because, well, uh, it's hard to get many things from the code. Well, I guess you can, but still, for example, the, the layout will be rendered by the browser. So you cannot get the layout of elements from the code, right? And, if there are some intersecting elements and some poor grids, then you may not notice this in the code. So usually, uh, aesthetic analysis, uh, aesthetics prediction mainly is done based on screenshots. So we let the browser render the code, make a screenshot with some resolution, and then try to analyze it. So that's a bit of an image analysis, but not much. We have a dedicated tool for that, but uh, our kind of study is concerned how good that the data will be because you can send the raw image to the model. 
that's one way. But uh, that would be generally deeper, and uh, we get to the move to the mirror effects, which we usually do not have, because the static data sets are usually just uh, surveys uh, by uh, some researchers usually. The best time to do. Do you think this is uh, pretty right? Can you raise it from one to seven, for example? It takes time. So we don't have mirror directly. And we usually do some pre-processing. So we select some features, for example, number of colors, number of elements, amount of uh, white space, things like that, and then try to fit them into the model. So uh, good data. Good data has so many dimensions. And um, yeah, I think I will not stop here. So what's important is that uh, generally you want to label the screenshot, right? So this is uh, an image, this is a button, and this is a table, or something like that. And many uh, performers are not very much uh, motivated to do good work. And the platform these are not very good at controlling data quality. So um, we wonder um, if you request some people you don't know to do some labor and tests to do uh, for money, and you want to control the quality, so basically discard some bad results. So the good results that you keep and that you use uh, as training data, they cost more, right? So how do you uh, Estimate the return on investment. You invest money into into data quality, labor quality, but what do you get? So our study is based uh, on another work. I presented it uh, about one year ago at Intelligent Systems Conference of Canada, and we had some very strange findings there in the in the study. Because we found many situations between the input data quality and the quality of the output, the aesthetic solution. That was uh, unexpected because usually you would expect that the better is the labeling, the more accurate, the better is the outcome, the better is the prediction. But we tried considering different factors. And we didn't find any other. So the significance was pretty high and it was a negative situation. So, what do good researchers do? They replicate the experiment, right? So, we started another experiment and we had it. Uh, about the same number of patients, but we now had more anyway. Because we thought that maybe this negative correlation was some statistical artifact. And about the same number of verifiers, people who verify the quality of the work. And also, we, uh, that was actually my master's thesis idea. So, we wanted to try non parametric methods to improve the prediction. I don't think that was very important, but also I will tell a bit about this result. So, what we did in the we got uh, about 550 screenshots that we collected from a uh, website company. Uh, unlike in the first study, where all these um, home pages were of the university websites, here it was more than work. So we also thought maybe it's one of the reasons. Maybe there's something wrong with the aesthetics of university websites. So we now have several domains related to government, use, uh, cooking, and cultural like cuisines and things like that. And then we asked even participants to estimate the aesthetics from one to seven. Well, actually, we had three scales: complexity, aesthetics, and argument, but aesthetics was our focus. And that would be our dependent there. And then we asked. Another screen because, well, HCI is probably a science about students because who else would be able to do so much work? Uh, we asked them to label the uh, screenshots. 
and there was such one of them. Labeling would basically mean I will show you later drawing a rectangle around each element and specifying that this is the, the bottom, as I said before, table and picture and so on. But then another thing is to avoid their dedication. So they took the work of the previous group and they just specified for each other map. If they think that <coughs> the labeling is correct or incorrect, that would be our precision measure. And also for each screenshot, they specified if all the elements are labeled. And that would be our completeness or subjective completeness measure. Uh, some examples. Example of the wood layer. You can see a very neat uh, rectangle uh, around each element. So the verifiers specify that this is a very good layer, 100% that's an example of a bad labor. Some students who performed the labeling didn't care much, wanted to do something better, which is right. So, uh, so uh, many of the elements, for example, this image in the center of the table, some of the boxes are uh, out of the form um, to, to, to be. In some cases, you do not uh, label each specific element just drawing this example. So in this example, the verifiers said that the precision is low and subjective completeness is even lower. So that's something. Well, of course, we wanted good and bad examples because we wanted diversity uh, of the quality in our data. That's how the verification was performed. Uh, they would specify uh, subjective completeness. You can see at the top of the world each screenshot and also the great precision. Like the number of correct items divided by the <coughs> total number of items in the experiment. And uh, the mean precision was 84%, so not too bad. The students were reasonably well motivated. Uh, in the previous study, it was comparable. And subjective completeness was a bit lower. So either the students were related, or maybe the screenshots were, well, maybe we had an average more elements and the students did not label them for the first cases. And the final observation, of course, between precision and subjective completeness, which makes sense because if a student is well motivated and wants to do good work, then he or she will be accurate and will label a lot. If the student is not motivated, then all the both measures should probably drop down together. Uh, so, what we had 30 samples for the screenshots and the total number of elements labeled 27,500. Two of the labels were outlier. They didn't want to be a work show. So, you can see subjective completeness of 2%. So, we just figured out that's too bad even for us. So, we had 28, 29 remaining. And we constructed 29 linearization models and one model with all the data, all the aggregated data. And in the previous study, we had eight factors, and we didn't do any uh, feature selection. And we didn't test if the factors were significant. We just threw them in. So we thought that maybe that's the source of the problems of the negative correlation, which we did not expect. And we constructed further regression models. Also 29 and plus one with the aggregated data. Now we form feature selection based on last one method and we try to see factors here. The eight factors also included things like number of images, uh, share of text on the screenshot, and so on. But turns out after this selection that these three were the most important. All right. So in the first study, uh, we found no significant correlations for the completeness. But we found, as I said before, uh, very significant but negative correlations between precision and accuracy. These are the names of the level labels in the first study. These are the results. 
and these are the average quality of the models that we constructed you put there you put there and we found also an negative correlation for all of that also significant and correlation for complexity but also this is so in the second study, we used um, two types of models, and as we would expect, the kernel regression models were a bit better because, well, linear regression is the simplest of them all. But we must be concerned about the correlation with the input data quality. And here you can see in the table. That correlations are the particular regression which has better after also negative, but not very significant, but still negative. We try to push some correlation and candle for tangle candle style correlation, but still there a bit negative. Okay, so then we merged the data from the first study and the second study. So we now have photo work. Together. That's a reasonable amount of data. And we also decided to check all the six years complexity of things and learning can be here. And no significant correlations again, but at least they turned positive, which of course better aligns with the theoretical expected results because common sense would tell us. That the better the input data is, the better it should be done. Still, we can see that as the amount of data increases, as we take a larger and larger data set, it seems to be approaching the um, theoretical expected results, but still are not exactly there. So, coming to the conclusion, uh, as I said, common sense tells us, well, of course, quality data is better than some uh, bias or uh, data produced by some neglected, neglected uh, labor. We don't care about the effort to perform more random, less precise labor. But yeah, we wanted to check and somehow quantify this. In the first study, we got right the opposite result. Uh, we actually provided some explanations for that. For instance, maybe it is uh, good for static regression that not every element is labeled. Because uh, when a user looks on the screen, or a glass, uh, you don't notice every individual element, right? You can see some of them as more prominent, some are more in depth in the background, maybe you don't notice some. So maybe we thought that uh, not labeling some elements is good for static regression because it corresponds to the way humans uh, see the image. But it was just our speculation. We did not want to show it. Um, so we were thinking about more information. Maybe if you label 11, it's not, not much. Maybe the rest of websites. Maybe something wrong with that. Maybe the models were too simple. So we replicated this group, which is not, as you probably know, often done in science, but we decided we want to be in touch. So we had more labels now, two, more than two, two and a half times, and more diverse set of screenshots. And we also had more uh, sophisticated models. But I cannot present you any conclusive models, unfortunately. Well, in my defense, the viewers thought that this work is worth presenting at the conference. So, although we don't have any answer yet, then it's, it's a work in progress, maybe it still has some interest. And uh, the is are not significant, so the version is somehow better, but not, not easy. And the data quality is starting to sink on it because it's not as easy as it seems. More accurate data uh, does not have any direct effect on the quality of the output data. 
and also seems to be dependent on the scale. For aesthetics, for complexity, we get different one. So that's also depending on how humans see that. And um, as I said before, HCI is more about um, so we're concerned about human aggression in the aggression. And so our teach plans are going a little bit to involve uh, trying to understand the differences between, for example, um, impression of visual complexity and depression of aesthetics and try to measure the effect of the different data and how we determine these things. Okay, I'm going to conclude the presentation. Thank you very much for listening. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Maxim. Uh, any questions? Uh, well, uh, I have. Uh, so, uh, thank you for your presentation. It was very interesting, uh, especially uh, as you mentioned the fact that uh, 90 or maybe 8% of uh, effort in uh, machine learning is data collection. And uh, uh, almost all, uh, despite this, uh, speak about uh, coding, speak about experiments, but uh, very few of uh, presenters uh, actually speak about data collection. You are <laughs> the good example of <laughs> person who speaks about <laughs> what is uh, takes most of time. Well, I thought data analytics conference is just a place. <laughs> Maybe, but uh, here we also should pay attention to this, uh, yeah. these uh, things. Uh, so, and uh, my question is connected to that. Uh, <clears throat> in our human world, uh, the thing that matters is human effort. So, uh, how much uh, human effort uh, uh, in uh, it's expressed in human hours uh, are paid to this uh, data collection? To the study. Yes. Need Students uh, said and marked uh, how much time they spent in total. Uh, in my university, University of State Technical University, we have a sort of uh, a crowd intelligence laboratory, which uh, basically students, uh, so we are mostly students, uh, who do different kind of projects related to data uh, labeling, machine learning, and like that. Uh, my thinking when I organized this lab was that they should try doing this kind of work, data labeling, which is not exciting at all, so that they have some motivation to uh, become good uh, IT specialists, right? So they don't they don't label the data all of their life. They do some more creative, more productive work. And every year we have several volumes of students who do this data library. So that's actually kind of needed for credit. Um, I would say that for each screenshot, if it's accurate labeling, that's 20 to 30 minutes. So since we have 500 of them, if you multiply by 20 minutes, that would be 10,000 minutes, something like that. Uh, hundred thousand minutes. Yeah. Oh. Well, that's that's um, quite uh, a lot of time. So yeah, that data collection was intense. But the good thing is that we could do it in parallel. So we gave uh, this like six hundred of screenshots to thirty students. That would be just twenty screenshots per student. And then given one week, they usually can do this kind of work. I see. Because they don't uh, interact much with each other, so they can just. So, in total, uh, uh, time around uh, several a few months. Yeah, probably. I see. Uh, it's a big effort. Uh, anyway. Actually, today I'm going to have a second presentation, which is based uh, partially based on the same data. Mm -hmm. So, the good news is that we use the data for several studies. They don't just do, did it for this particular study, there's more. So it's not going to be just used one. That's a long term. Yeah. Okay, yes. <laughs> Data are very variable. <laughs> yes. uh, and this effort uh, should not be uh, wasted, of course. I think uh, I have three or four uh, master students who graduated uh, with this kind of data. 
Very good. So bachelor students do the work and master students <laughs> do the research and I do the publication. It's a good collaboration anyway. Like yes. So, and uh, considering uh, the uh, the conclusion, I think uh, the explanation of this, uh, as you say, incomplete results is that uh, uh, human impression is much more complex thing that we that any of our models. So uh, maybe uh, collecting more data and introducing more uh, elaborate models will do the thing. Well, uh, today, uh, static impressions are generally predicted with neural networks, of course, where usually they take uh, some big model that can <clears throat> that was trained to predict aesthetics of, uh, for example, photos, like uh, landscapes, and you know, forests, mountains. So people would rate uh, this uh, aesthetics of general photos, and the models would be trained. And then these models are fine tuned for different interfaces. And they get uh, R squared around uh, 70%, uh, which, is, big, which is not much, uh, but probably okay. But the problem is if we have this kind of fine tuned model and we want to tell the designer what she needs to do for the aesthetic compression to go up, we cannot. Because we have no idea. With the factors, we can say, okay, yes, it uh, seems uh, that text has a negative effect. Just put less amount of text. And generally, or put it on the right, or put it on the left, yes, uh, and whatsoever. But the network, the network, Net network is uh, uninterpretable. Right, right. So that's like, has some limitations. Okay. Uh, any more questions? Oh, no. Thank, Thank you. you.